welcome to another episode of the Hatch Podcast. It's me, Glycel, and of course, my co-host is here today, Aman. How are we all doing, guys? Today, we have another special guest. So today, our guest is the founder of HGVIS. It's a community-driven fashion platform, bringing the physical together with the digital using VR and AR technology. So let's have a warm round of applause and a warm welcome to Isola. Welcome to the show. It's really nice um, having you today. Thanks for joining us. Um, you've obviously been a fashion designer for quite some time. Can you maybe tell us a bit more about your journey in fashion and what led you to venture into blockchain? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm Lisa, the founder of HGVs. So I'm really glad to be here today. So let's start from the beginning. So I joined this journey like around 2020. It's like the COVID time. So at that time before I was like doing a lot of physical fashion. So I was working in the fashion industry for a long time, also seeing the over consuming a lot of problem is happening. And during the COVID time, there's, you know, a lot of works that postponed and the client was not replying. So I start to discover so how fashion could be changing another way. Then at that time, so we know like there is a super huge company called the Fabricant. So they are really ahead at that time. They already launched the first digital garment. So I see it's super cool and uh, super hyper realistic. So I think it could be a very interesting journey to uh, start from something physical, transforming to digital and how we can approach it. And now, you know, everyone's talking about metaverse, gaming, this kind of area. So it could be a future of the fashion, how it mm, transforming into something else. So I started to learn everything about Cloud 3D, Blender, this kind of software, also blockchain, Web3, what is the meaning? What is also, you know, like DAO, this kind of very specific um things so from all the journey i feel like it's really interesting because web3 is a very open i have to say everyone is over uh, very welcoming to introduce you and connect with you with other friends other community and people are really happy to contribute for all the projects that we are doing so step by step we start to having our small community from also creators and collectors then we are doing like touring around the world with our digital garments also through ar and vr we can bring our work so basically everywhere every city i've been traveling so i show our community our community the co-creation work so everyone are super happy so that's also the reason that it supports us to going further because you know and uh, there are so many people who really love the project and really willing to join us and help us to grow and go further. Yeah. If you don't mind, actually, maybe maybe you could give the listeners back home from from your perspective as you're the founder an idea of what HPVIS is and maybe like what's the core guiding principles of the project and why do you guys exist? Oh, okay. So um, for me, I was just uh, explaining something really wide at the very beginning. So um, the reason why I want to continue this journey and why we established this platform is because uh, we see a lot of people, uh, also young designers, they want to launch their own project, but they don't have enough money to build the physical garment. So we basically want to um, encourage young uh, designers to have the digital version first. Then we building the bridge through the um, collectors or buyers with their um, uh, new collection and the buyers together. So it's also on demand this kind of thing. So uh, once they purchase the item, then they, uh, the designers start to physical doing all the things behind. So it's kind of very, um, um, how to say, good for the ecosystem. Also, uh, we have like uh, a lot of people who are interested in gaming. So we also connect with some gaming company and avatar company. So I think like in the future, digital identity is very important in our life. It's not only, you know, we have a physical, environment we can also digitally represent ourselves and you know like customization is really expensive in the real world but in digital world it's really easy so now we are um, also launching our start to launch our new uh, feature about 
all the digital garments, how you can customize customization your own digital identity and showcasing metaverse. So that's also another reason that we want to, uh, we are trying to uh, let everyone to know. So it's all, all about digital, physical and sustainability together. You mentioned um, sustainability. That's a really interesting topic in the fashion industry, just because it's a huge issue, especially in traditional fashion. Um, what role does blockchain play in creating a more sustainable and ethical fashion industry? And how does your company as well address the environmental impact of fashion production? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of ways that traditional fashion um, blockchain and also sustainability works. So one of, it's not our main use case. So we have a partner. So their company is doing everything on chain. So from the supplier, the raw material that fashion like yarns and fabrics. So everything like in this ecosystem. So they basically launch a package that um, um, to can say that they are really sustainable in the industry, then they come into everything, put transparency on chain. So once everything, like every main product and the supplier, they log on chain. So you can see, okay, the final product is very sustainable because the whole process is on chain. You can see through everything and everyone allow, um, is obeying the rule that is sustainable. So there's one, this is like one way for the, and real garments have it is a use case of that also for the blockchain. So for us, we are doing another way. So we are selling digital asset first on chain. So uh, you can have uh, experience of the AR try on. Then you said, okay, I it treats me well, so I like it. I, I think it's okay just for some of them because we're selling in different way. One is totally digital, which is uh, la cost less. So you can having a um, um, uh, asset, digital asset and AR experience. Also, you can use it in some gaming and fraud metaverse. Another one is, okay, I like the product, so I want to order the physical one. So everything was based on chain. So when you were selling the product, every certification will also go with you. It's kind of proof of what you own. So this is like our use case. So I'm sure there are also a lot of ways also like, you know, a lot of company, they are using NFC chips to yeah. link the physical item and digital item together, everything built on chain. So there's multiple ways to really connecting, you know, fashion technology together. So I think one of the things I also found interesting was you guys mentioned that you're a heavily community driven platform, right? And I'm curious about two things. One, what is the makeup of the community? Like, where are these people from? What are they like? What's kind of the diversity of it? But then also, how do they participate in helping the community mm -hmm. driving side of things? Like how are yeah, they engaging yeah. with you guys? Okay, so from the first question, so basically I was doing like also my master degree here in Milan. Then mm -hmm. we start to have a lot of like uh, designers around us. They are, you know, every young designer, they have a dream to build their own brand. So I said, okay, um, I'm really help, uh, willing to help everyone to have a, page to showcase since I was working in this industry with also speaking all over the round world. So I have some connection with conference and also like we are building Metaverse special space. So I was really willing to pull everyone in to give them a place to showcase. So that's the beginning of our community. And also when you are trying to giving value to people and they are really happy to see what you create for the whole community, not only for myself, you are bringing them everywhere and showing everyone is co-creating this project. They bring more people to involve in like artists or collector. So it's kind of like uh, spreading more and more people who are interested in this project and want to be part of it. Then we start to move forward with more and more people in this community. Also, uh, when we are in conference, we are, you know, meeting people. Yeah, we are connected. Then we say, okay, let's do something together, like make a whole project, maybe some co-creation. Um, so that's the all the project step by step at the beginnings. And also, I'm thinking like co-creation is not only a thing that you create something for, you know, like a 
you know, in Web2, they squeeze the value. But I think like uh, when you're entering into a community, we are also adding like other value, like uh, how many you participate and you have other value like uh, to, now we haven't launched our token yet, but later I'm sure like based on all the works we are showing case, we will add also the token in the community. The token owners, they can also get some profit from every like community, like we are showing case or we are selling the percentage of the profit should giving back to our content creator. Mm -hmm. um, you've, you've recently attended, you know, Digital Fashion Week in Paris, and you also mentioned attending a few conferences and I wonder from from the fashion shows that you've seen to you know all the panel conversations fireside chat what would you say recently has been the biggest surprise or highlight for you whether it's in terms of technology and blockchain or a topic of conversation mm -hmm. that you were like oh that's interesting Mm -hmm. So for me, I think now I can see more and more brands, uh, they are participating, also luxury brand, not only, you know, a um, few years ago, I think just only in Gucci and uh, Dolce Gabbana, also like uh, Adidas and Nike, they are really super hard, you know, into the Web3 and uh, uh, how to say participating a lot in the Web3 community building, metaverse building. Now a lot of other brands also like young designers, they are also joining to the new space. So we are kind of creating because digital fashion, it's very new area, just yeah. speaking like uh, three, four years ago. And now still you can see more and more people, they are become more aware about this is happening and they are curious about what is going on and how the luxury brands are how big company they are activating in this area. So it is a good thing that, you know, everyone is being curious about this and later step-by-step step and um, uh, we will become more and more, there's more and more activity because as you mentioned before the digital fashion week, it's just beginning from New York at the very beginning. Now they start to tour around world to New York, London, Paris, maybe they're talking about next year in Milan, I don't know. So it's like, uh, kind of like exposure, also like uh, the traditional fashion uh, area. More people are, even they don't know about what is digital fashion, but they are curious. From all the conversations you've had with um, brands who are fairly new to blockchain, obviously have difficulty of understanding what it is. What do you think, or what has been like the biggest misconception behind blockchain, you think? <laughs> like your understanding behind it. Mm, I think um, this is some part, like I just attended the eighth Milan. So mm -hmm. when we are talking about blockchain, I think for a lot of people who don't know, really know the technology behind it, they will think about it's a scammer. So <laughs> it is true that, you know, because cryptocurrency is like, you know, sometimes very crazy, but um, also I think there are some good product like we are selling this NFT so it's linking to physical items so it has the value behind a lot of like a project they are building say maybe a story or a gaming behind but or the digital asset maybe they just uh, having a big beautiful roadmap then they have the selling the NFT then they didn't do anything we've made it we've made it to the guest segment so this is a special guest segment and basically how it works is the previous guest we had gave us a question to ask you. Oh, okay. So from our previous guest, your question is, as we are entering a new world where digital and physical are much more connected, mm -hmm. what would you recommend parents of a child tell their kids or help their kids learn about this new world that they're entering? How would they, what is a piece of advice you'd give a parent <laughs> to prepare a child for the new world? Of, of the digital, physical, <laughs> blockchain, everything. <laughs> wow. That's a tough question. Because uh, when you're asking me the question, the first in my mind is like asking uh, in the opposite way, how the kids are telling their parents, you know, because <laughs> I, I think right now, not so many people, they 
uh, especially people, you know, having some age, they have their kids, they don't understand this well. And they're asking everyone, why my kids spend so much time and money on Roblox, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I, I don't know, <laughs> this makes sense because they, they don't really, and I think like in the future, it depends, um, just let them to try it. So uh, I think young generation, they are adapting this very well, especially people who playing games, they are the first uh, adapting all the new latest technology as always. So when you are playing and um, you will start to discover by, by your own, as I am used to be a computer player, in the you know, so also the people you are playing with so it's kind of a small community they were talking to you what is happening also just let them to explore okay. my advice is just let them then, spend what, their time what would your question for the next guest be um let me think about it um i don't know so what kind of guest do you usually have or can't tell you. Can't tell you. Has to be completely anonymous. <laughs> okay. It's always different. <laughs> okay. Um. So my question is: so in the near future, I mean, just in three or five years, um, do you think like um? um so the majority of people in Web two are they are adapting? into Web3 and having the whole mind shifting of like what um, owning the asset is really important for them or not. Yeah, this is my question. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. We thank, thank you so much for, for coming on the show today. We really appreciate mm -hmm. your time. Everyone listening, please go follow them, support them, buy their clothing, explore, <laughs> join the community. And we appreciate, yeah, you. We appreciate you guys taking the time to listen. So make sure to like, comment, subscribe, leave some feedback, and we'll see you guys next time. Take it easy. Thanks, everyone.